Red Bull gives you wings. The drink you see is kind of a business marvel. Though it is the most popular energy drink, its contents aren't patented and all its ingredients are listed on the silver can. It is the most expensively priced energy drink, selling at $3.59 a can while being made for $0.09. Cents. Even then, Red Bull sold 7.9 billion cans in 2020, one for each person on Earth. So what propelled people to continuously choose Red Bull over other energy drinks? And how does Red Bull, by filling garbage cans, influence them and even you to do so? When starting out in 1984, Dietrich Mateschitz, founder of Red Bull, didn't know that he was going to face the toughest three years of his life. The struggle with the Austrian FDA to get Red Bull approved, the constant experimentation to make the drink more suitable for the European market, and a horrendous product review provided by a marketing research firm hired to test Red Bull. Mateschitz recalls, People didn't believe in the taste, the logo, the brand. I never before experienced such a disaster. He believed in his product, but knew it was going to be difficult to convince people of the same. Hence, to kickstart his growth, Mateschitz started using marketing techniques that played on human psychology. Here I have to introduce a new concept that has been affecting human decision-making for thousands of years. Heuristics. In other words, mental shortcuts. Let's say that you were surfing YouTube looking for information on a particular topic. You come across two videos on the mentioned topic, one from a channel having 50,000 subscribers and another one from a channel having 1,000 subscribers. Which one do you click on? You would most probably go with the one having 50,000 subscribers. Why? Because of the belief that the channel with 50,000 subscribers will have a better quality video than one having 1,000. Here, you formed a judgment on the quality of the video based on the popularity of the channel. This is known as a heuristic. Heuristics are mental shortcuts that help us form judgments and make decisions quickly without much mental effort. One heuristic we use in our daily lives is that things that are popular must be right. Products which are more popular must be of superior quality. This saves us from all the effort of checking whether such products are actually better. And it is this perception of being popular that Manischitz influenced in his early days. First, I would like to get the obvious out of the way. No successful business exists without a successful product. Red Bull has always delivered on its promise to increase its users' energy, concentration, and alertness. But when the product was introduced in 1987, no energy drink market existed. To create a market, instead of adopting mass advertising techniques, Mateschitz started going after the drink's target audience. He targeted males between the ages of 18 and 34, who would benefit immensely from the drink. But to get them to start using it, he molded their perception of the drink. He began by sponsoring college parties, clubs, and other social events. He would send out Red Bull minis to hand out free samples to his target audience. He even filled garbage bins around clubs with Red Bull cans. Now, whenever a member of their target audience went out, they would see Red Bull cans everywhere. At parties, colleges, clubs, this helped create the perception that Red Bull was an extremely popular drink. Even the garbage bins filled with Red Bull cans told them that Red Bull was the drink opted by most people. And this image of Red Bull being popular drove them to use the product. The benefit of being perceived as popular is it creates a vicious cycle. More and more people start adopting the drink, which further increases its popularity and eventually kickstarted its growth. Red Bull has come a long way since its early marketing days. Its current content marketing strategy helps it connect with millions of its users directly, and its sponsorship of extreme sports events, racing, and soccer teams reinforces the cool image of the company. But is the image of being popular still important for such a big company? You can actually check that. Let's suppose that you want to try out your first energy drink. You go to the store where you see a number of energy drink brands bundled together. But before making your decision, a couple of recent articles come through your mind that stated that Red Bull's sales have declined by almost 60% over the past three years, and that the sale of Monster Energy Drink has risen by 300%. Now, which drink do you choose, and does this information affect your decision?